Welcome to a Rugby League lunch hour. Uh, we've got we've, we've got another another lad in uh, today. We, we've traded James Gordon in the editor for a younger model uh, in the shape of Josh McAllister. Josh McAllister uh, has has done previous uh, work with Love Rugby League. He's part of the JDG media team as well, doing a bit of media and marketing. He, he likes to jump on loverugbyleague.com uh, every now and then yeah. uh, when me and James are off. Off on our jollies in France or uh, Barcelona or wherever. Hopefully Valencia sometime soon. Um, Josh also does a little bit of work for for Swinton as well uh, in their media team. Uh, I've always been uh, a fan of Swinton's media team. They've uh, they always seem to bat above the weight. Um, so we're just going to be talking everything Great Britain. Uh, obviously they they've lost every single game on the tour. They've they've gone down to a four 0 defeat. Uh, against Tonga, New Zealand twice and Papua New Guinea. Um, and we're also going to be talking Wayne Bennett, all things at the RFL. Uh, I'm in the French Magic weekend, obviously we, we was kind of open Jim to be here, so me and Jim would be, be able to have a little bit of a discussion uh, about the French Magic weekend and but what can, we got up to. I can ask you questions about it, can't I? But Josh is going to ask me <laughs> questions about it, even though I'm the host. Uh, first things first, let's, we, we can't really go past uh, Great Britain, Josh. Um, losing four games out of four on the tour. Uh, what do you make of it? Make of it as a whole. Um, it's it's very disappointing for for myself. It is very disappointing. I, I think we, you know, we'll find out the future of Wayne Bennett. I think soon. But I think from the start, appointing him as England and Great Britain is a conflict of interest. Mm. So with the lack of international games that we have, he's obviously seen it as a chance to look at his English players for the upcoming World Cup. So really, you know. It goes beyond Wayne Bennett. I think there needs to be more tests for England so Great Britain can develop. Um, but yeah, it's, it has been very disappointing, hasn't it? Uh, just remember to, to keep getting your comments in. Uh, if you want us to discuss anything in particular, uh, then we will do. I don't think Wayne Bennett should be sacked. I think I think he's been put in a tricky situation and a conflict of interest between him, England and Great Britain. I've seen it. And, and some, he has made some, some odd comments, hasn't he, while he's been away. But I think he's had a, he's a good he's got a good reputation. He's a good coach. Keep him as England, but find some money for Great Britain. That's very interesting to be fair because I I was going to uh, suggest something different. Uh, I think the majority of this this Great Britain squad is English, isn't it? It's yeah. um it's been an England team really, apart from uh, obviously Sco- uh, Lachlan Coote uh, who's played for Scotland and Joe Philbin uh, who's played for Ireland as well. Um, I think they've underperformed massively on this tour. You'd certainly be expecting them to beat Papua New Guinea. Um, try not to disrespect the Cummels too much, but um, they've, they have players who play in League One compared to obviously the big the big money earners uh, in Super League that GB uh, have got. So uh, I think I think they need a new coach. I think Sean wins the man for the job. Um, a lot of people will say that. Uh, will say I'm being a little bit biased uh, because I'm a, obviously I'm a Wigan. Lab, um, but I think Sean Wayne has got everything uh, to to be an international coach. He's obviously out of the game at the moment. Uh, he's, he's obviously with the Scottish Rugby Union. I think he'd be a, a perfect fit for for GB. I think he'd, he'd have the passion uh, and the drive. A lot of people will probably make a comment on his playing style. Obviously, the, the some of the Wigan fans uh, got bored uh, towards the back end of his tenure at the Warriors because of his uh, well. Let's just say it was very well structured it through was, the yeah. middle. Yeah. Uh, but at the end of the day, so you won trophies yeah, with, yeah. with Wigan, um, and that's something England and Great Britain need to be doing. They need to be they need to be beating the top teams, and they, 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 I think they've fallen back massively uh, compared to last year because they obviously beat the Kiwis in the three match test series, and New Zealand this year look, look different class. Um, they they totally outsmarted. Uh, the the Lions in both games. I was the second game against the Kiwis. I was majorly disappointed with Great Britain. I didn't watch the Papua New Guinea game because obviously me and James were in France covering the Magic Weekend. We we actually woke up at, uh, at half past eight in France to try and try and get the the Papua New Guinea game up, but uh, the BBC didn't allow us because we was in France. Um, so we couldn't. Would you appoint uh, Wayne as Great Britain and England then? But uh, no, I I. I I can get rid of Bennett. I'm going. To, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I I think he's he's done what he can with with England. I think they have made leaps um, 
going forward since he came in in 2016, I think it was, uh, they, they've certainly improved, but I think Sean Wayne would take uh, England to the next level, um, and I think he'd, he'd possibly uh, win a World Cup with cool. England, or, or and I think it would be the same with the Lions as well, but I do agree with uh, what you're saying in, in regards to, I think there should be another coach for Great Britain and for England, maybe you could have Daryl Powell as a Great Britain coach and Sean Wayne as the England coach or vice versa. Uh, I think it needs a separate identity and I think yeah. the Lions brand has been tarnished on this tour because, let, let's face it, um, it, it was an Engl English team. Uh, there was there was barely any representatives from Wales, uh, Ireland and Scotland. Reading Grace, for me, should have been the port, the catalyst for the, for the the other home nations, um, he, sh he definitely should have been in the uh, and the only pit two wingers as well did the Lions. So I was massively disappointed with the squad selection. I think Bennett got it all wrong. Um, I think it, it also proves a little bit that it, that he doesn't really watch much Super League because uh, if he did, then I think Regan Graves would have would have been in the squad, and I think Ash Hanley would have been in the squad. Um, that was another disappointment, wasn't it? Flying him all the way. Well, he's, he's, certain, he's certainly racked up uh, the air miles, hasn't he? Uh, Kat says, Winters here, Drew. <laughs> Drew hasn't got his shorts <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> Kat's right. Um, well, well, no, it's, it's not. It's, it's, it's not because it's here. Uh, I've, I've, got my, um, I've got my jeans on just because uh, I'm going to an RFL meeting a little bit later on. So, so Kat, you've got to... You've got to look professional sometimes. <laughs> uh, I can't believe how many people are all sitting in my shorts. So I, I, I remember he says, can we please get subtitles for Drew? <laughs> <laughs> what are you on about, Aaron? Um, I'm, getting a little, I'm getting a little bit stick here. Um, so we, just speak about yourself at Swinton as well, Josh. Uh, what's your role at, at Swinton and, and how did that come about? Uh, so I was at university. Um, it was actually James that got me in touch at Swinton. So. I joined, I think, halfway through the 2018 season, uh, which wasn't a great season for Swinton. I think they ended up in the playoff against Workington that year. And then 2019, Stuart Littler uh, and his assistant coach, Alan Coleman, they did really well, recruited really, really well. The likes of Gavin Venue and appointed mm -hmm. Bobby Lloyd as captain. And 2019 was really good, so I do a bit of the social media, did cover game days, um, all that stuff, signing news. Mm -hmm. And then obviously towards the end of 2019, it's been a bit of a journey. But things are on the rise again. Steve Wiles taking charge. Balls coming together. I think they're just waiting for RFL approvement. Uh, they were signing a few youngsters, Ben Hayes and Thato Heath, who played well in the Challenge Cup uh, against, was it North Wales Crusaders? And uh, I swim some hope and Hayes can be like the Matty the Ashton. Matty Ashton, Ashton well, why not? Yeah, because they signed another youngster called Louis Brogan, who he, he represented England, uh, I think it was under 21, under 23's championship. So I think it is the hope to look next, Matty Ashton, who obviously look at the success he's become first year. Mm. Top try scorer. Uh, uh, how are things looking at Swinton now? Obviously, because we had the the big change over the course of the off season. Uh, Andy Maisie, the chairman, all the directors uh, left the club, and they're in discussions now to take over at Rochdale. Um, how are things looking uh, at Swinton? Because obviously they're not going to be go becoming uh, Manchester Lions anymore. Yeah, I think they are. Yeah, remain in Swin Swinton. As I say, Steve Wiles doing a good job there. I think they're, they're slowly, uh, you know, things are coming together. A board. I think are going to be announced soon. I think they're just waiting for RFL approval. So things are looking up. I think Stuart Little again has got himself a good squad. They managed to retain a major core of the 2019 squad, which is something maybe they failed to do in the past. And they've kept sort of, I don't know, Matty Ashton has gone, but they've kept big star players such as Gavin Bennion and, and Rodri Lloyd uh, for the 2020 season. So I, I think, you know, on the pitch they're looking all right. And off the pitch, as, as long as the fans back them, you know, they're getting bums on seats and people paying tickets and I think season tickets were on sale and shirts hopefully on sale before Christmas. I think 2020 should be all right despite you know what's happened and you know best of luck to the the board if they take over mm -hmm. Rochdale. Obviously I worked closely with them last season and the year before that so best of luck to them. I think you know Rochdale they, they could be in a good place if they join them because they're a really good board. Good stuff. Uh, we've got a couple of comments coming through on Facebook now. Jack Appleby says uh, do you think the failed GB test reflects how we will be be performing at the World Cup? Do we have the players to perform uh, to our best capability? 
Uh, obviously, it's cross wires though because obviously England are sep- well are supposed to be supposed separate to be, yeah. um, right. from Great Britain. Uh, I just think this tour has been a failure. I, I, I think there's a number of reasons why this tour has been a failure. I don't think the Lions brand was taken seriously from the start. I think there should have been um, a selection process that you, you that you have to go through, like in rugby anywhere. There is a good group of people from England, a good group uh, from Wales, a, a big group from Ireland and another big group from Scotland. I think you've got to have representatives from each nation. Um, I don't I think, think there's been one positive headline, has there, of this Great Britain tour? I, I don't think there has. And it's a um, shame because when it was coming back there was such a I think the only good thing about the Great Britain tour has been seeing the kits. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. In the training gear, uh, I, I think yeah, that's, that's been, nice, the only, yeah. been the only uh, the only positive so far. Which is a real shame. Uh, I'm sorry, I still can't get over that comment from Matt, uh, Aaron. I'll have a word with him next time I see him. <laughs> he, he can't give me a stick about my Wigan accent. He's from Bradford. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Kev says there is no lie involved that uh, they need to re reevaluate after the poor performances uh, in all of the games as the Lions only have three weeks uh, together, not enough time. Well, there has been quite a lot of uh, a lot made of England slash uh, GB not having a mid-season international as well. Do you think that? Um, yeah, I think hampered. Yeah, uh, the lines a little. As it is, you know, Wayne Bennett can take a lot of the fault, but it is because we don't have enough international tests. So again, he's seen Great Britain as a chance to see his English players for the upcoming World Cup if he has obviously signed on for that because of the lack of internationals we have. Mm-hmm. So he's not been able to see his players. So I think you've talked about it with James before. What's nothing stopping us to, to bring back the exiles maybe mm-hmm. for a mid-season competition. Um, I think it was Fox Lee that tweeted a picture, a graphic with all the players that could be involved. And it, it was a good lineup, wasn't it? Uh, I, I'm sure it'll attract uh, large attendances as well in 2020 with the, the recent signing of uh, Sonny Bill Williams. Exactly, yeah, Sonny Bill Williams. And then, the, you know, even like big name James Maloney at Carlin Dragons, there's plenty of big names to, to attract fans to go and watch it. Uh, how many years did we have the exiles for? I think it was only a couple, wasn't yeah. it? maybe two or three it years. Gave it enough chance. I saw someone post saying state state of origin wasn't a success at first, but keep with it and look at mm-hmm. it now. Obviously, we're not going to get the same state of origin, but if you can get ten thousand people to watching the versus exiles, mm-hmm. not only is it good for the game, it's good for the England squad. Then it may be in the long term benefit Great Britain because England have their own separate mm-hmm. identity in games. True. Um, I think the exiles could be brought back, and I think the overseas category of players now in Super League is much stronger than it was when the Exiles um, were were formed because of the marquee ruling. Um, Obviously, I don't think you'll be able to have Jackson Hastings, uh, Lachlan Coote, uh, George Burgess, uh, like Fox League tweeted. Should we we get Fox League? uh, Well, would you be able to have Lachlan Coote? Because obviously he's Scottish. And exiles is England uh, versus surely not, well, especially well, especially if you're sure with GB or some debate. Well, but if it's, if it's England, but anyway. Well, the, the exiles are uh, seventeen. Uh, that the that Fox League uh, tweeted earlier was Lachlan Coote at fullback, Sean Kenny Dell, the new Hulk yeah. signing, and David Mead, the uh, Papua New Guinea international, the Catalans on the wing. Uh, in the centres, a very good centre pair of uh, Conrad Hurrell of Tonga and Kevin Nagama of Fiji. And you've also got a uh, new Casper winger, Becky. You have, been there you as have. Well. You've, you've, got, you've got to watch how you say his name. Yeah. <laughs> um, I had to think about that <laughs> Fox, uh, Fox League gets, uh, have included Gareth Widdop in the halves. Obviously, he's only ever played in the NRL, but... Um, he is English, so... He is English. Uh, James Maloney uh, as scrum half. George Burgess at eight, and uh, David Fafita at ten. Um, Again, George Burgess will be playing for England, but it will. I Tom, like where they're going. Tommy Lulai at nine. Manu Mal, the Tonga, the Terminator, as he's called. Sonny Bill Williams in the back row, but that is a and strong back yeah, row, isn't it? And just his name alone, you're going to sell tickets. Exiles featuring SBW, you're going to mm. sell tickets, aren't you? Super Benny Westwood playing? I think so, yeah. Um, <laughs> Trent Merrin at loose forward, who's he's obviously played for uh, Australia as well, played in the, the World Cup final, I think it was in 2013. 17? <laughs> um, uh, Jackson Hastings, <laughs> Ben Murdoch was still there, Sam Cassiano uh, and Kenny Edwards on the bench. It's a big bench as well. Cassiano, I think he's played for uh, Samoa, Ben Murdoch was still there, obviously, Tongan International. Uh, Jackson Hastings, obviously, he's, he's, uh, I think he's, uh, he's putting his future towards England. Yeah, he's so he's obviously played for Great Britain. 
You've got uh, plenty, of, plenty of half-backs to choose from the Super League, haven't you? And Ken Edwards as well, um, who's obviously uh, put us for the Giants uh, this season yeah. after joining from Catalan. That would be a very strong team. I think I genuinely think the exiles could work. I think it would generate, generate big excitement just because of the calibre of players uh, in the exiles this time around because I just think looking from 1 to 17, they're obviously... You 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 have to take the, the British boys out, um, I'd assume. Um, but looking at, at the caliber of players, it's it's very strong. Um, yeah, Hurl and, H- and Nagama in the centres uh, is a very very good centre pairing. Uh, but but look at the pack like Manu Mal, Sonny Bill Williams in the back row, Trent Merry, uh, who's obviously the marquee man at Leeds. Sam Cassiano, Ken Edwards coming off the bench, adding plenty of firepower, and Ben Murdoch still as well. He's, he's just a beast. Uh, I'd, I'd like to see the exiles return, but if not, then you could even uh, England, England or GB, depending what what the plan, the RFL plans are for next year. You could just play France. Would, would, yeah. Fra- would France not be better as a mid-season international than having no mid-season international at all? Any team like that, France. Ireland, Wales, Scotland. Well, you could even, even if you have it, if you have it in there, you could even have a combined Celtic team, couldn't you? Uh, Scotland, uh, Ireland, Wales versus England. Um, but and there's your competition for Great Britain places. Mm. Even if it is to continue. Well, exactly. Um, it would certainly give the selectors uh, a little bit of a, a headache. Could you have more of the roles in return? Are you not for that? No, yeah, I'm not against it. I think was it, yeah, was there a charity game for it earlier this year? Yeah. And that got quite a few tickets sold, did it not? Yeah, so I think I think the exiles will be the big one. Um, but if that can't happen for, for whatever reason, um, I, th- I think I, I, I don't see why a, a test against France would be a bad thing, to be honest, because... Um, in France, or play Scotland in Scotland, so then... Yeah, I think if, you, if, you, if England play France in Perpignan or Carcass somewhere, I've been this weekend, obviously it's... it's been to France, have you? The ground holds <laughs> uh, 10,000. Um, the ground holds 10,000 in Carcass on, and I think you'd, you'd sell it out as well yeah, if you took but England over there. But the thing is as well, is I didn't realise until the weekend gone, uh, when I was there for the Magic weekend, that... It's, it's a massive sport in the south of France. Uh, a lot of people are very passionate uh, about rugby league, whether they play it or follow it. Um, and I, th- I think that would be a good thing for the game. And you could even have, like, um, you could make it into an annual fixture then. So, so um, you always play France in France, or one year you could uh, uh, play them in France, then the next year in England, then the, the following year in France. Or you could just play it in France every year, so one year you could go to Avignon. The next year you go to Carcassonne, the next year to Perpignan, uh, the the following year to Lesignon, wherever, uh, and and that'd help grow the game in France, and that'd give the French players a little bit of an incentive as well to to play for the national side. Obviously, there's quite a lot of uproar at the minute uh, regarding the the French national team with the French federation and so on, um, but I think that'd give a little bit of passion back into the French national team and. Uh, I'd like to see it as well, and it'd make it a bit more of a test for England as well, having to go over there and maybe stay in France for a week and so on. Um, and no disrespect to France, like but to see. I think at the 2013 World Cup, I think they played England in the quarterfinals at mm. DW, and now, you know, five years later, six years later, they're not the team they used to be, are they? Mm. Even though they've got, they've got just as good talent and players, but we saw plenty of them missing uh, for the... Yeah. Nines competition down under, so I think you need to develop, uh, get back at developing the France team again, and getting them into the top top six ranked teams because mm. they've got the talent. Uh, well, and um, I hope that we can uh, we can see a strong French national side uh, within the next couple of years, and, and let's see it flourish again. Louis Bank says Exiles was class, and the merchandise was great too. I remember some of the kits for the Exiles; they, they, they were very nice yeah. kits, weren't they? Um, and they had like Danny Badiris playing. Uh, see, so, see Soliola playing, uh, Tommy Lulawai I think played as well when he, he ran his first stint at Wigan. Uh, let's just uh, run through some of the news, some of the news that you covered this lunchtime, Josh. So, Sean Lunt joining Batley for 2020. 
Big sign for the Bulldogs. Yeah, it's a good signing. Experience, Sean Lunt. I think he's one grand, fa- grand final win, three Challenge Cup appearances. I think he comes with plenty of experience and, you know, that league of always around about mid table, mm-hmm. sort of challenging to try and get in the top maybe six, seven. So maybe this year will be, be their year. Would you not hope it was going to be joining Swinton? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm happy with Luke Waterworth. Uh, Australia legend and Queensland legend Cameron Smith will play on in 2020 after signing a new deal with the Melbourne Storm. Uh, he just seems to get better with age. He's like a fine nice. wine. Sasaya Fekir, as you mentioned earlier, has arrived at Castleford. He, he's in the midst of pre-season training as well with the Tigers. He's going to be a good signing for them, isn't he? He's going to be a quality signing for them, yeah. yeah. I think he was still playing fairly regular for Cronulla Sharks in the NRL before mm-hmm. he joined. He was. So I think he's a quality signing. And again, another name for the Exiles, alongside Ben French. Yeah. I don't think he was in that start in 17. He's another quality player that could play for the Exiles. Uh, calls for Ottawa and New York to skip League One, uh, says Barrow Trim and Steve Neal. Uh, he believes that, obviously, club, Heartland club, shall we say, uh, clubs with not a big budget in League One um, will struggle to, to compete with the likes of the big spenders uh, in New York and Ottawa. What, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think they should? There should be a fast-tracking system, or do you think they should start White Toronto Wolfpack started in League One and yeah, be forced yeah. to, to rise through the league? That's the thing. You could put them straight to the Championship, or well, it will be the Championship, won't it? To run a Wolfpack, we're going to have to argue then. Why do we have to start in League One? Mm. I think it should have to work their way up. Um, as long as it's no expense to the League One teams, because even then it's a good experience for for those players who you know might be on small contracts, players who play, but their chance to go over to to those cities and play, I think, you know, a life experience. Yeah, uh, I'd, I'd agree. I'd, sometimes you can see you can see both sides of the the argument. Can't you? You feel if they they should be made to start at the bottom because they're a new club. Yeah. Um, but then again, when they're spending four or five times what the, the fellow the teams team, yeah. are doing, uh, maybe maybe more than that amount, maybe eight or nine times what the fellow teams are doing, uh, you, you might think, well, what, what's what's the point in, in even trying or competing this year because they're massive favourites uh, to gain promotion. Uh, I was actually speaking to Jake Emmett on the weekend and he, he joined Toronto when for their inaugural season in 2017 when they when they played in League One and obviously Jay Kemmett's always been uh, he, he's never played League One before he's either been in Super League or he's been in the Championship so they were signing these calibre of players were the top end uh, players in this country who was being forced to, to play in League One um, so you, you do feel as though if, if like a commentary at the time or maybe a Workington or a Whitehaven were thinking, oh, it's, let's save our, our money a little bit, wait for them to get into the leagues and then we'll spend a little bit more next year. Um, so there are you can, yeah, you can two see sides that, yeah. of the, yeah, you can see the story. Uh, former Super League player uh, Matt Gardner will coach the Brazil women's team at the 2021 World Cup. Um, he, he played for Brazil at the Rugby Sevens at the 2016 Olympics. Uh, his mother's Brazilian. Uh, we've got the off-the-record off gossip column out uh, every single Wednesday. It's uh, always a popular feature. Uh, Jacob was even saying he reads the, uh, yeah. the gossip uh, uh, every time it comes out, uh, which we, we, me either. and James were, were pleasantly uh, surprised about. And off-the-record this week, Josh Woods, the Wigan Warriors halfback, uh, is set to resign with Lee uh, Centurions obviously he spent the season on loan at, at the Centurions he hit one call which I think she's switching <laughs> off right now <laughs> Thanks, Lisa. Thanks, Lisa. Nice team. Um, and we've got quite a little bit of um, quite a lot of French news on site as well this week SBW is he off to France make sure you're clicking uh, the off the record at Rugby League Rooms and Gossip uh, 13 fam- familiar faces who played at the 2019 French Magic Weekend. Ah, it took me a while this feature yesterday. Yeah, it was a good read as well. It, it took me a while trying to find all the images of all 13 <laughs> players as well. Um, Josh, I love you more. Uh, Peter Godinet, former Wakefield man, uh, he was in action as well. Um, th- there was plenty of ex Super League players, Championship players, League One players, uh, France internationals. 
uh, on show in Carcass on Rochdale star Darbrum has drawn uh, Oldham for the 2020 season. Uh, very good sign, um, in my opinion. Can play full back or half back. Newcastle star uh, Rhys Clark has signed a new deal with Thunder. The 2021 World Cup draw has been delayed. It was meant to be taking place next Wednesday, um, but for some reason it's been put back to, to January. There's been no explanation as to why it's been put back to January, uh, but it has. I'm sure you'll find out soon, won't you? I'm sure we will. Well, I hope we will. Uh, Christian Wolf, I was at the St. Helens press conference on Tuesday uh, for the unveiling of Christian Wolf uh, as St. Helens coach. It was the first time he's spoken to the media since being uh, over in the UK. He seems a great guy. He seems uh, He speaks honest, um, and that's all you can ask for. As for from a coach, uh, he, he did say he, he was keen to stay on as Tonga coach uh, as well as being the boss of uh, St Helens. Wayne Bennett is not the right man for Great Britain and England, says Phil Clark. Thoughts on this, Josh? I said it earlier, didn't I? I think yeah. it was a conflict of interest. I keep. The things you want to see Sean Wayne coaching regularly, don't you? And if he coaches Great Britain, then he's not going to coach. As much as you would with England, oh, it's, it's it is a conflict of interest. It's a tough one. I think, I think Wayne Bennett will stay on as England coach, but they'll have to find another Great Britain coach if Great Britain, you know, is to carry on again after Britain. this disappointing tour. Uh, French clubs are keen to return to the Challenge Cup. A piece that editor James Gordon did earlier on in the week. Uh, we're obviously. Rooting. We were in France and we've not mentioned it. Do you want to talk already. about it? Go on, um, go on, I'm five minutes. I'll sit back. The core, the core manager, the core coach of Carcassonne, it, Fred uh, Camel, he does a little bit of everything, to be fair. He's a kit man, he's a, he's a director, he's co chairman, he's, he's a bit, he just does everything. He picked you up in the airport. Fred Camel. <laughs> yeah. He's a driver. Uh, taxi driver. Yeah, yeah, he's a, he's a, ta- he's a yeah. taxi driver. Like, no, no, he's not. He's a, he's a, <laughs> He's a, he's a firefighter is in, his, in his day job, yeah, he is. Uh, Whitehaven Joe of uh, um, Callum Phillips, Scotland International, and Sam Forrester, the half up pairing that got Whitehaven uh, promoted to the Championship last year, they've signed uh, new deals with the club. It's good to see players rewarded, isn't it? Well, we've, ju- we've just been speaking about France, we may as well have a little five or ten minute chat on the French Magic Weekend, but we, we, keep, to do we, this. Keep, we keep mentioning it, we keep coming <laughs> back to it, we may have, have, a, have a little chat now, me and James are all, went on Friday, came back Monday, uh, the French Magic Weekend took place in Carcassonne on the Saturday and the Sunday, uh, there were, well there was meant to be five games taking place overall, but only four went ahead, the Toulouse game with St Gordon's got postponed because of uh, an illness in the Toulouse camp, I think, I believe they have uh, some of, well, a lot of the players have the mumps, um, and that's why they didn't play. Uh, I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It wasn't a big crowd uh, in Carcassonne, but the Magic Weekend kicked the season off in France, the Elite One uh, Championship. When, when speaking to, to Fred Camel after uh, the game, he says it was the first time the Magic Weekend had been held on the opening day of the season uh, to kick off the season but that's why not as many fans went to the game because uh, went to the games because obviously one it's TV it, it was shown on TV for the first time and two was because it was freezing <laughs> it was it, it, it was <laughs> did about, you wear shorts? It, I didn't wear shorts <laughs> I, wore sh- I wore shorts when me and James went out for breakfast on uh, the on the, the I'm surprised you can suck a pair of shorts I always wear shorts. How can your suitcase go, no, I'll need a pair of shorts. No, but it, it was, I, I got it right because on the Saturday morning it was about 10 degrees, the sun were out, and, and James had his big bubble, his lovely bubble jacket on, and uh, he was actually getting quite sweaty, so I was, <laughs> I was winning in shorts, 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 and, shorts and a fleece. Um, so I was winning in that aspect, but um, yeah, it was, it was brilliant. It was a good experience. Um, the, the food, though, they don't eat. Honestly, and this is not being stereotypical in France, in in the south of France anyway. Every meal you have bread with it, so that was no go for me. No carb diet, and um, every meal they, they have French fries. It, it's either you get a baguette or French fries with every single meal you have in France, because that's what me and James did. Uh, I think I think we must have had 
about six baguettes over the course of four days. And, you took and maybe, vision, didn't you? Yeah, I did, I did. Uh, maybe four or five uh, rounds of French fries as well. Uh, and we had, we had some meat in there, but it was mainly, it was mainly carbs on carbs. Um, James mentioned this morning that you lost some weight, though. I did, I, yeah, I lost yeah. some weight. I, I weigh myself. I weigh myself every Sunday. I'm on the low carb diet at the minute. I lost four pounds from oh, Sunday to hey. Sunday. Um, so the, the carb diet was actually hey. doing, yeah. doing me some good. <laughs> Um, but there was about 600, I think, I'd say, overall on the second day. The first day, maybe 400 fo- uh, to 500. I was a little bit disappointed with with the crowd figures, I'm not going to lie, but uh, they do get much bigger crowds in summertime, obviously, when, when the weather is good. Um, because it, it, it was cold for me, James, at 8 to 9 degrees. It was cold for me, James, who, not, who, who were used to this kind of cold weather. Uh, whereas in France, they, they were like um, they were staggered that, that it was that cold uh, for the for this time of year. So um, I think I think the weather did have a lot to do with the intensities. Maybe they could have got over a thousand if if the sun was shining, and I, and I think they would have done. Uh, but it, a great concept. We've had a lot of uh, good comments coming through. Um, saying that they enjoy the coverage uh, so we do appreciate the the kind words we're just trying to do something a little different we're, we're trying to we are expansionist uh, a little expansionist a little bit more close to home rather than north america um but we, we thoroughly enjoyed it there's, there's an appetite for the game in france all the all the foundations are there they, they've actually got big budgets as well uh some of the french clubs uh, I think Lesignon have got about eight hundred thousand uh, pound per year to to spend. That's yeah. that's not just on player wages. Obviously, that's on uh, training yeah. equipment, staff, facilities. Um, but Carcassonne have got about thirty thousand pound per month to put to pay players. So if it's it, a decent if it, if it, isn't it? yeah, so if you've got a squad of, of twenty five, it's obviously working out at around one thousand two hundred. Per player, on average, I think. But obviously, you'll have, nice. you'll have some higher earners, and yeah. you'll have you some some, uh, some of the squad numbers. Some paid more you play. earners, yeah. Um, but thirty thousand pound a month, I think. All of them in the League One last season had ninety five thousand. Um, so when you compare compare that, it's it's quite it's massive, really. It's you've got triple the budget of of what all of them have. Who are obviously a heart of the club and and won League One. Uh, well, didn't win League One, but they gained promotion from League One to the Championship uh, last season. How were the games themselves? Were they good? It was pretty. It was a good, good, good quality. I think um, there were some players who were, who, were, who were obviously far better than other players, um, but there's, there's some good French talent coming through. There was a fullback for Avignon uh, called Corentin Ray. I think he was eighteen or maybe nineteen, and was. Light, lightning. He, he wore a head guard a little bit similar to we, we, me and James have started to compare him to Kelly Ponga. Um, a bit of comparison that one. <laughs> purely just because of the head guard. Uh, but he scored a hat trick. Uh, very quick feet. He's got a big future in the game for for sure. There was a guy a bat rower for for Saint Esther V. He was six foot eight. Uh, called Corinton Lecam, uh, and he was twenty. So he was six foot eight and twenty years of age. He was a big boy, um, and I think he's got a big future. I think he scored. He definitely scored one. Might have scored two. Um, so there's plenty of talent there, um, and each each team are allowed three expat players. So three overseas players in effect, but in France they call them expat players. Um, so they can't just go out and sign Australians and English players. Uh, just so that they can have a better team, they're actually focused on developing French players, which I which I think is pretty good. It's it's a good way for for the French game to grow and to develop. Uh, there's a lot of good players all on on show. Uh, we've, got, we've got a couple more comments here. We'll we'll wrap it up for the French round up though because obviously you you, you, for hours, you, did, right. you didn't come with us, <laughs> John. So uh, so you you <laughs> so, um, just saw the pictures. Uh, Owen Lockwood says, "What are your thoughts on Sean to Batley? Um, a massive signing. We, we covered it just before, but because obviously Owen be always asked yeah. it, we'll we'll cover it again. I think I think it's a massive signing for for Batley. Uh, super standard player for sure. He's maybe not had the the best 
couple of years uh, in recent years in regards to his performances. Obviously, he's had his difficulties off the field as well. Um, but I think if he, if he can maintain his fitness, it's more than a good, a good sign yeah, for Bath. He's, he's a quality signing, I think, for any championship team, really. So I think, you know, he'll bring something to Bali, definitely. Mm. Uh, Louis says, Wayne Bennett has shown he doesn't look outside of the NRL with his bizarre squad selections. No one is doubting his ability, uh, but it needs to be either a full-time coach or someone who is based over here and not in the NRL. Which is what you were saying yeah, before. Was so it Sean good? Wayne for, for Great Britain and Wayne Bennett for England, I think. We just stick with Bennett, yeah, definitely. You're quite <laughs> set on sticking with Bennett, aren't you? <laughs> you're quite, you're uh, quite, you're quite uh, set. Bra- Bradford captain Stephen Crossley has signed a contract extension with the Bulls. He'll captain the Bulls next season and Sam Hollis will be his uh, vice captain. James Gordon has done his column this week uh, and it's a very good one on Great Britain. Uh, the headline, you don't know what you've got till it's gone. The demise of RL Tours. A uh, very good read. Um, it's gone down a uh, storm on social media as well. Uh, Jared Sammett's been named in the Malta squad to take on the Wales Dragon Arts. Adam Mills is making a rugby league documentary which will be shown on Channel 4. It is, yeah. Um, Half 11. Another set forward for the sport as well. Yep, good publicity. I think you know he talks about it on his on his on his show on Channel Four. Uh, I think the documentary very good. And it, it's a shame it's so late at half eleven. I think it's on December. Uh, I can't remember the election exact day. day. Is it the election day? Twelfth of December. So whatever election day is. <laughs> <laughs> it's now the Adam Hill's documentary day, isn't it? <laughs> um, the women's star Caitlin Bieber has well been nominated for BBC Young Personality of the Year. Uh, she's helped the Rhinos win the double, the Women's Super League and the Challenge Cup uh, this season and also been uh, here, there and everywhere with England. Uh, they've been on the two-match test tour with Papua New Guinea most recently and obviously played in Australia for England at the World Cup Nines as well. Uh, former Swinton chairman Andy Maisie is leading a consortium to take over Rochdale. So I think that's with I think four of the board that are at Swinton. Mm-hmm. P- P- Pete, Richard, Andy, and Tony. Who does the just press board? <laughs> it looks like the other. <laughs> just think of what I think. I think that's who it says. Dave. Dave, is that you? <laughs> I think that's who's leading it. I think it says that in a statement. Um, so yeah, best of luck if if that goes all to plan. I think you know Rochdale could be in a good place with, with a good mm. board. So they've, they they yeah. have insisted though that um, they're, they're not going to be relocating or changing Rochdale yeah. Hornets to to Manchester as well. That, they, yeah, they have made that uh, very very clear uh, in the statement that they have released. They're in a good spot Rochdale because they're in Rochdale. I think the the point with Swinton was because they haven't played in Swinton for so long that to move forward they need this name change. And I saw, you know, part of the media team, I saw both sides of it. I saw some fans complain and some fans back it. I mm. was 50 50. Well, I, I supported it. I'm not being, you know, a lifelong fan of Swinton. I supported it, but, you know, it didn't, it didn't work out in the end. But I think it was a good idea, especially, you know, in 2021 when we're looking at these TV deals. It's easier to sell Manchester and, you know, well, it could have been Toronto and the big cities. Um, but Rochdale in a good place, you know, they, they, they co share a nice ground and they're uh, in the hometown. So I think they're in a good place. Good stuff. Uh, St. George of the Water Dragons has, has confirmed the signing of Isaac Luke, obviously the, the New Zealand uh, Kiwi veteran. Ellis Gillum returns to Whitehaven as well after a stint at Rochdale. We've got an interesting mailbox uh, that went out on Tuesday uh, saying a fan uh, suggesting play Challenge Cup games at Magic Weekend instead of um, maybe putting a, an unfair. Um, Extra which round. was uh, an unfair advantage to some teams on yeah. the Super League table. Uh, what what do you think about this? Yeah. Uh, the prospect of this um, playing Challenge Cup games at, at Magic Weekend. It, it, it's it's a difficult one because what what happens if uh, some Super League teams are not in that particular round? And you could get championship teams that are in it. Exactly. Uh, James Messenger, who works here one day a week, he was a big fan of this piece. Uh, I think the idea of having a knockout competition, and that you know, if a championship team was in it, they'd give it everything. Super League team, yeah, they you know they'd probably give it everything as well. So I think the sort of knockout sort of competition would be exciting. 
again, like I said, some teams won't feature in it, some will, and you don't really know until close to the time. So, who do you sell tickets to? Who buys a ticket? Because you don't find out until a few weeks before. So, but I think the idea, you know, if, if more detail to it, I think it could be a good concept. Yeah, I, I agree. More more thoughts got to go into it, but I think I've said my opinions on Magic Weekend. Uh, enough, it, it should be scrapped. It's um, it's a gimmick that we don't need. Uh, Bradford sign Anthony England, uh, former Warrington and Wakefield uh, prop. Uh, a good, good signing. A very good signing again in the championship. You've got you've got to think though where where the money's coming from for the Bulls. At the minute you do, we signing some big big names, mm-hmm. signing some big names. They've also said that they want to to sign uh, at least six new players as well. Uh, in the coming weeks, uh, so we'll see how that pans out. Obviously, John Key is staying on as Bradford coach next year while they play at Dewsbury's Tetley Stadium. Uh, London will not take part in the 1895 Cup in 2020. Any thoughts on that, Josh? Uh, I think some Championship teams would be happy they don't make, have to make a long trip down south if they were to draw mm-hmm. them. Um, you know, being a cup competition, it, you'd like to see every team involved in it, isn't it? But again, if they've got the choice and they don't think it's beneficial to them, then, then why do it? But again, if they was in it and they got to the final, then it gets played at Wembley and it's a chance to promote their brand. Um, so, you know, you see both sides to it again. New Zealand take top spot in the international world rankings. I'm not going to lie, I've, I've never really got world rankings in any sport. I think they're a bit daft. I think they're a bit... Um, Pointless uh, sometimes because we all we all know Australia are the best team in the world. Um, I know they've lost to Tonga, but we all know the Australia are the best team in the world, not New Zealand. Um, <laughs> anyway. I like. In, in, I'm a big fan of Benji Marshall, so he goes. Back I, I am. A, I am a big fan of Benji. Benji. Uh, he's a legend of the game. He is. England the third. Obviously, they've gone. They're minus one because. It's been Great Britain this this autumn. Make that what you will. So, so Tonga are fourth. I don't I don't know if Tonga are fourth when they beaten uh, Great Britain and Australia this autumn. Uh, so they have stayed the same. No idea how how they just stay there in England. Yeah, stay yeah. third when England haven't I played an international. Right, I've never understood why the teams like but so you know your Wales and your Islands and your Italy's are outside the top ten possibly. You know, I think maybe they could. Mm. Get in the top maybe twelve. Where where's Wales fourteen? I think Wales could have been a bit better than fourteen. Your but mate, again, your mate playing for yeah, Wales. But you can. It, it's hard to it's hard to judge, isn't it? Because obviously every team don't play each other, so you can never. Well, exactly. Judge, you, you you, but you think if, if Wales played Wales are fourteen, if they played Greece if, at if, eleven. If they played Greece in eleven, they'd be beat, they'd beat Greece, wouldn't they? Yeah, you, you'd expect some they anyway. go eleven. But um, yeah. Serbia are fifteenth. Yeah, Jamaica are twentieth, and Jamaica had absolutely slapped Serbia in an international game. Uh, at present, Cook Islands, who've just who've just qualified for the uh, World Cup, uh, are, are right down in the bottom as well. Uh, the the so, thing about the Cook Islands is they don't play many Test matches. No, they don't. Uh, and that's the only thing that holds the cookies back. Um, so yeah, the who's the guess who the bottom team is. The bottom ranked rugby league nation in the world. Yeah, I should know because I put this one on the website, but I can't, <laughs> I can't think. Come on. 40, there's 45 nations in the world rankings at present, in the men's rankings. Who's 45th? You have to tell me. Begins with an L. Oh. <laughs> Ends in Latvia. Oh, right. Latvia. Yeah. When, well, when Black, they I played international games. No idea. <laughs> <laughs> no well, idea. Well, who else is down Canada, there? Canada, a 27th. Brazil, down there. Thirty first of Germany. Brad Billsborough uh, plays for the Germany side. He does. He's just signed for. Who's he just signed for? Brad Billsborough. Oh, oh, you. You, you should know. You, 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 you No, you might have looked at the website. You might have looked before. <laughs> You're a big fan of him now. Is yeah. it? Uh, he's signed for North Wales Group. That's where it was. Yes. Twenty twenty. Yes. Josh, I'll do your job next time. Right? <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, Toronto Wolfpack have been confirmed in the Challenge Cup as well next season. They mustn't have had to uh, pay up a bond yeah. uh, to the RFL this time around. But I think it also says there's two teams out of it Red Star 
they look great about it. They played last year and Toulouse. Who did it say Toulouse? Right? Uh, t- Toulouse have not, have not played in it for the last couple of seasons. Yeah, so they're out uh, again. No, um, Missy Talapapa has left Newcastle. Yeah, uh, a big switch up going on at Thunder. Uh, Danny Spets is, is, will continue in his role as, as director of rugby at Kingston Park. Dewsbury have announced the signing of Matt Fleming from uh, London Broncos, the centre. Uh, very good signing. Another good signing in the Championship, I think, is Keel Carlisle joining Halifax. Another good hooker. A, a very experienced hooker, uh, especially in the Championship as well. Um, we've got the paper talk feature. What what's got plenty of transfer talk for the late, from the latest edition of League Express and League Weekly as well. Uh, buy the papers, um, see plenty more content. But um, you know we've got Cruz leaving handed in a transfer request at Huddersfield. Any idea where he might end up? I think yeah, I think he might be behind a, a move just across uh, Yorkshire to lead. We'll see if that one uh, plays itself. Uh, Bradford to play in a double header at Headingley as well. Yep. Sheffield Badge just above it. Big fan of that Sheffield Badge. I think yeah. it's a, a good new identity for them. Uh, well, well, yeah, I, th- I think it's a, a, a smart badge, isn't it? This, and they've released two very, very smart kits. Um, well. Head- Headingley are going to host uh, three double headers uh, in 2020 because uh, Bradford's championship class with Dewsbury will be played on Sunday the 21st of June. It's a loose. Uh, L- Leeds are already due to open Super League with a double header uh, against, well, which will feature um, Toronto's clash with Castleford because obviously Toronto don't play in Canada uh, until round 11. The Rhinos will also participate in a double header in Toulouse, like you were saying, Josh, um, when their clash against Catalans on May 30th uh, will be played at the Stadion as well. Uh, along with Toulouse's match against the London Broncos. And that's obviously the Magique Summer Bash. Apart, so, some people are saying it's the, the, uh, the first ever uh, Summer Bash or Slash Magic Weekend in France, but it's not because me and James were there <laughs> at the weekend uh, for the French League. You haven't heard you talking about it, Magic <laughs> Weekend. Uh, so we've got plenty of content on site. We'll have plenty more content throughout the day. Um, I think that just about does us uh, this week. We've got a competition on Love Rugby League. I, did, I didn't even know people st- still did DVDs these days. <laughs> but we've got DVDs to give away. Uh, it's very shiny with all the packaging as well. We've got the 2019 Charles Cup Final and the uh, Super League Season Review and Grand Final uh, in that one. So to enter, just uh, go on to loverugbyleague.com. I think the competitions tell... Not this Monday, the following Monday. I don't know what the date is. It's, it's left. 2nd of December. My head. It's 2nd of December. Thanks very much to Lucy for telling me that. Uh, enter the competition completely free. Uh, get your hands on some Love Rugby League goodies. Uh, I think that just about uh, does it for us, Josh. Thanks to our sponsors and partners, Heaven and Health. Go on to their website, heaven uh, n health. Uh, dot uk to order some meal prep to start from just forty pounds. Um, each meal averages out at three hundred fifty calories, uh, and also thanks to our other partners, uh, Betfred as well. Um, they keep us uh, fueled throughout the off season with plenty of good uh, tipping uh, stories as well. So make sure to to check them both out. Uh, thanks to Josh for joining me. Um, no thanks to, to James for not joining me this week. <laughs> uh, he's, he's having a day off. He'll talk about uh, France next week. Uh, we will talk about France next week. Uh, until then, have a good week and we'll see you later.